old advertisement was 500 pound car for $500. <laughs> Oh, 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 water just came out the, oh, oh, dude, that's cool. It looks like there's more dead mice in there. <laughs> it's a meme, it wrote itself. What's up everybody? On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, I have to share that we've been harboring a bit of a secret from you all. Ike made a marketplace purchase a few months ago of a 60s micro car. It is sweet, but it has a little bit of an iffy name for today's standards. But we ultimately decided that uh, while it has a bit of a controversial name, it is a piece of history and we need to share it with you. And it's been off the road for 20 years. So in today's episode, we're gonna get it running, riding, and return it to service. So let's go check it out. Behold the 1969 King Midget. We're gonna have some fun with this one, guys. So this car company was created by two brothers who were veterans from World War II. They named the company Midget Motors. And this is one of just a few models that they had the King Midget. Back in the 50s, cars were expensive. A lot of people couldn't afford cars and used cars were in short supply, kind of like what we have going on now. Yeah. So the solution were micro cars. The King Midget was one of many micro cars from back in the 50s and 60s. This ran from 1949 to 1969 or 70. So this is one of the last King Midgets to ever leave the assembly line. They made 5,000 in their day and said that there are only about 1,000 left. So we're gonna do our best to treat this thing as well as we can while still having some fun with it. Let's check out under the hood and we're gonna see what it's gonna take to get this thing running. So this thing is actually rear engine. What? And we got a heck of a powerhouse. Dude. This is a Kohler 12 horse single cylinder engine. And uh, it's had an upgrade. This thing has a CVT. Uh, CVT on it, and it did not come factory with the CVT. So, like you said, yeah. this was this was like designed by airplane mechanics. Yeah, check it so out. Yeah. There's the framework right there, and it's got the holes punched. Yeah, I mean, when I look at that, I think of aircraft. Yeah, yeah, lightening it up. I mean, because yeah. like, look at the fuel tank. That's crazy looking. Man, it's body color, man. How's it look in there, or smell? Holy cow, it looks great. Oh, nice. This must oh, be stainless steel dude, or something. It's got a glass bowl fuel filter. It's empty, too. That's good. I wonder yeah. what that's from. I mean, well, they got those on tractors and stuff. Back in the oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I do know that this is since this is the later model, they actually lengthened it a little bit longer than the original. Oh. The original ones were 500 pounds. Oh, that's right. They sold these for like a dollar a pound originally. 500 bucks. Something like that. This one being bigger, it's now 800 pounds, and uh, it's got a bigger engine, and the later models had the standard doors. You had to pay for the doors, or they didn't come with them uh, on the early models, and yeah. it has reverse. Yeah, the old advertisement was 500 pound car for $500. Yeah. So, why don't we have micro cars nowadays? Because we have safety standards. Oh yeah. Ralph I'll, Mader. I'll sign a waiver. Can't they sign waivers? I don't know. All right. I'll just stick with this King Midget. Yeah. Yeah. So today on Cars and Cameras, we're going to prove that in 2023, or we're going to answer the question of, do we really need EVs or are micro cars the answer? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think they are because their micro cars were grandfathered in. I mean, just kind of... Fuel like, mileage. Yeah. Well, well... If saving the environment is the goal, what? how far are you willing to go I'd to stick your neck out? micro car than a EV. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, because this pollutes a lot less than the dump truck hauling the, the, what I'm is not it? Even gonna the get lithium that. out of the strip yeah, mine, not, but we're not going to get into that. It's got battery in it. We need to put a battery charger on this thing so we can turn this thing over and see if it's got spark. My guess is it doesn't. So, uh, we have a battery charger in here? I'll go get one. Cool. 
So it's been off the road since 01, so 22 years, but the previous owner said that he started it up, what, a few years ago? Something like that. I don't know how old the battery is, but it doesn't look ancient. Um, do we have anything going on? Okay, it's a little low. I've, I've wondered what this thing is. Touch tones 80. Sure. I don't know that I don't one know either. That one either. Sounds like a circus. Charge! <laughs> so you know what I noticed? I was trying. I looked under the front. There's the factory horn. Then I think the one that you were just playing with, and then there's the. Uh, uh, uh. Is there one? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get that working. Oh, yeah. yeah! That's my favorite. I didn't know that this battery still had some juice in it, but it doesn't have enough juice to, to turn it over, it. really. What do you got it on? Put it on 2 amp trickle charge. Okay. Because on 10 amp, it was saying it was full. So we'll just trickle charge it. Is this All a 12 right. volt or 6 volt system? Oh boy! unplugged i don't it looks like a 12 volt battery it didn't hmm. you never know on old stuff cold cranking amps it doesn't say so i'm really glad y'all mentioned something about is this 6 volt or 12 volt because i have no idea it is a pretty small battery but that could be a 6 volt but i'm going to say it's a 12 volt it's 12 volt okay i'll it's take your word for it okay well it's reading 12 volts how's that oh and us Bump charging it wouldn't have. Not, not we wouldn't that have. Much. Met, yeah, we wouldn't have done that. Yeah. So. All right. Hey, better safe than sorry. That's right. Because there's only what a thousand of these left. Supposedly. Yeah, we don't want to burn her down. No, that would suck. So it's got like a full size dipstick on this thing. What'd you call me? <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, is it in? It's looking Ooh, a little light. It's looking a little. Yeah, empty. it's on the oh, light. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Hold on. Let me let me wipe it and recheck it. So this is like a transmission dipstick. You gotta roll it to the backside. I don't see it up front, but oh wait, that's just the that's, difference in oh, the metal. Man. Oh man, she's low. Like low, she is low. low, low. Like I'm glad this thing didn't crank up. Looking better. It's still not touching. <laughs> <laughs> wait, how much did you just put in? Uh, maybe half a quart. Oh. Yeah, because it's like. It's showing halfway up or more than half on this side, but you go to this side and it's just barely touching. So, I gotta say, the quality of this dipstick in this ni uh, micro car is like nicer than modern cars. Yeah, I'm not it's quite sure about this bend. That looks a little. I don't know. Doesn't That's matter. probably how it held itself in the tube. Don't you think? Like they, they put pressure on the tube? It centers it. Okay, it centers it. Yeah. I bet this is the only factory car to come with a tail. I, oh, I'm yeah, just being I don't know stupid. what that is. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. Got it oiled up. Checking right. for spark. Keep on cranking. Oh, dude, that's a strong spark. Are you serious? Yeah. It's pretty good. I bet you it's that engine has points. Yeah, I mean, the dude, fact there's, that there's an external capacitor or uh, resistor. Or, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But what is that? That's the capacitor, right? Did you notice how strong that starter sounded? Like, sounded good. Well, I mean, over. Dude, All right, it's... so uh, there's no gas in it. That starter is probably big enough to roll over a V8, probably, or so. a diesel, like a diesel tractor so, or something. I feel like if we put gas in it, yeah. if the star, if the uh, uh, carburetor is okay, it might crank up. So we noticed this fuel line is really hard. So what we're going to do is shoot a little bit of uh, starting fluid down the carburetor. 
see if it hits, and if it does, replace the fuel line, replace the fuel filter so we don't have any issues. I love that uh, air filter, it's so funny. It's cute. It is. I bet you you're right, it's all tractor parts, isn't it? Oh, well, that's probably what Charles said. A lot of these accessories, but, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's industrial stuff. It's probably how they kept the, part, the uh, cost low. It's, the I part's mean, been special. It's a 12 horse Kohler engine. Back then, how expensive were they? Probably the cheapest gas engine you could buy. Ready? Oh! 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 oh. oh. Water just came out of Oh! Right on the battery charger. Why is there water in there? <laughs> Probably because it's in an upwards <laughs> angle. Let's do it again! Let's do it again! That's pretty bad. But uh, don't worry, we were using it. It has upper cylinder lubricant, so we're good. Yeah, let's but go. um, oh, yeah, that's right all over your. Sorry, dude. I know. No, it was okay. I wanted to do it. It was my map, but that was pretty funny. And I knew that the uh, the way that the exhaust goes up, that the the back pressure wouldn't suck the water into the engine because it's broken right there. So oh, we perfect. Have, yeah, don't. It's not like I was I was purposely trying to hurt anything. I just wanted to see it shoot the nasty stuff out. Boys, it runs. I know. So what do you think? Uh, do you, should we start with like replacing the fueling I system? Probably we should replace uh, all the rubber hoses. Okay. And then uh, maybe, maybe fuel filter and yeah. go from there. I, I'm wondering if we're gonna find a uh, fuel leaks at that- uh, Let's try not to touch that. Electric, or electric, glass uh, filter. So I don't know. Uh, new fuel lines. This is a fully street legal, titled and insured vehicle. It's viewed the same as a car in the eyes of the law. We could have reused the fuel filter, but we decided to replace all the rubber and plastic in the system. We fueled it up with our favorite Sunoco 95 octane Optima fuel and tested the system. Well, we have brand new fuel line. We have a brand new Kohler fuel filter. I know, that's amazing. Which seemed to flow uh, as well as the one that came off it. Oh, good. So, good. Um, anyway, we're going to see if our uh, fuel pump works and if our pet cock works. Um, so as soon as Charles is ready, we're going to crank this thing over. Oh, is I found the... the choke. Really? Yeah, it's under the seat. Why is it under the seat? Oh, it's right there's there. There's a dead mouse. Oh! Ah. In a nest. There's a mummy. Oh, a crayon. What flavor? Oh, yin yang. Hey, that's mine. I'm gonna see if the choke works. I wonder if that's reverse. Boys, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, it's got legit seat belts in it. That's cool. Road see legal, I guess. All right. See what happens. Hold on. Okay. I think the fuel pump is leaking. Like leaking now? Because it definitely was sweaty. At first, I, I think when that, I saw it here, you look, you got okay. a flashlight. Just look at that gasket. I think that gasket is bubbling. Oh yeah! Dang it! So the block so, side pump's got to come apart. But here's the thing: it looks like the fuel tank is above the carburetor. Why can't we just hook it straight up to the carburetor? Gravity fed. Yeah, I mean it's definitely. Right, uh, it would have a little bit of an up travel. I mean, you might not get every little last drop. It right, depends but... on how you park. Yeah, there you go. That too. Um, boys, I'm gonna say that we're probably gonna have to take this carburetor apart. <sighs> Boy. That's my guess. Um, let's crack the line and see if we get anything. Uh, okay. Right there. Here you go. Nice. Yeah, sure. Watch the paint. Watch <laughs> the paint as he's uh. Yeah. Sorry, I I really do cool, care buddy. about. I really do care about this car. It's cool, buddy. Oh yeah, we don't need that. Okay. It's been cracked. It's wide open, so. Oh yeah. Here we go. Same Watch switch. your eyes. Yeah. Hey. We got fuel. So well, we got fuel there. Doesn't mean it's going into the bowl. That's true. 
it could just be stopping there. Yeah, if the it bowl could is have a clog. Up. But of course, we got to do something about that fuel pump, otherwise, when we're riding you know, down the road, you know it's going to be scary just about fuel. this. The, the only thing that scares me about this design uh -huh. is that it's got the flathead screws here. We're uh, missing one. I know. And then where does it go when the engine's running? Right. Uh -oh. I don't know. Well, let's just oh, say it fell out on, when it wasn't running. Yeah. Because um, it sounds healthy. It sounds good. I think we're going to have to take the carburetor off. Doesn't look like there's a gasket back here. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean we won't put one back when we put it back yeah. together. I'll just make one out of silicone. Well, we should. Ooh. I'll find a third screw as well. That would be, that would be nice. That's a big old carburetor too. It's twelve horse, buddy. Well, she a horse. My goodness. There's the choke. Oh, that little tear? That's nothing. I could pass that with RTV. <laughs> ah. Carburetor bowl is dry and it looks kind of nasty. So, who? Oh, look at the rubber gasket. Ew. All right. Uh. Well, we have our work cut out for us. Yeah. That's all the, that's not usable. Ugh. Oh, well there's a good, that's the mirror box. Huh? Has this building shifted more? Be yeah, the windows won't open there. All right, well, oh. there's stuff to fix. Yeah, there's a smell. There's a look, look, he still looks cute. Oh, no. <laughs> not really. He still looks cute. Yeah, he's got fur on him. All right, here, you get that one. I already got one of them. So the brakes. Oh, dude, that's cool. Check that out. Oh, Why? No. Well, there's the difference. Look. Look, it's like <laughs> you didn't you didn't enjoy that part of science class. No. Right. People are gonna think I'm Jeffrey Dahmer now. The thing is, in science class, they were in a embalming fluid and they didn't stink. There was the smell oh, of embalming they fluid. They, they smell like there embalming was, fluid. There was the smell of embalming fluid that didn't bother me. Yeah, this smells like pee. Bad old pee. Well, let's get them out then. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to try to pick on them. They can't help it. They stink. He's done this before. Oh, you know what? Look, on a side note. Are we adding to it? No, oh, no, it's another badge. It's a brand new badge with the plastic still on it. That's actually, we're, we're on the upside now. Oh, I found some bazooka bubblegum. Oh, I remember that. There's bazooka bubblegum? Still in the package? Well, it's in the bottom of the rat's nest, so you uh, don't want that. Okay. There it is right there. Oh. Ugh. Oh, boy. He's going to open that, and then we're not going to be able to close it. You know, we should really fix this building. We got sidetracked there for a second. But, uh, so, the uh, the brakes, the master cylinder, I guess is like right behind. We're gonna still call this the firewall because like that's just gonna give everybody a sense of where we're at, like on a, yeah. on a real car. Right. But, um, so, yeah, the master cylinder is right behind here and there's like this little panel on top of here. Um, I guess you could call that a weird, it's a random storage compartment that you can't really utilize, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to get the two flat heads out and hopefully uh, the lid will come off the master cylinder because as you can tell, there's no brake booster. So it's just manual brakes and it's like a metal cap. It's not a plastic one. So it's it's old school. Hopefully it'll come off. There's not, there's not much room in here. Hey, I but, remember five minutes ago when I was like, that lunch wasn't enough. I'm still hungry. Good now? I'm good now. All right. oh, I got some Bucky's Bucky Nugs in the shop. You want oh, any? I'm good. <laughs> oh, and here's the power cable to the Awuga horn. Oh, yeah. You gotta love the simplicity on the dashboard on this old thing. Hey, I mean, hey, 
you know, just look at this speedometer. It's, it doesn't get any simpler than that. <laughs> the hey, hey, eyes on the road there, Chief. <laughs> oh, what does that sticker say? It's the, the hey. King Midget Jamboree? Yeah. October 1995? Or I, August 1995. I can't quite get a good enough look at it. Eyes on the road, cowboy. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's bad. Does it look like... Dude, it, it looks like there's more dead mice in there. What? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> look like liver pudding. So we really want this car to have a dual master cylinder on it because if there's any brake problems, like if a line breaks or it's leaking, we don't want to lose all our brakes all at once. And a dual master cylinder, if you lose one circuit, there's two circuits on the vehicle. If you lose one circuit, you still have half your brakes. So fingers crossed that this is a dual master cylinder. It's really a safety thing. Yes. Oh. Oh. It's a single. I figured. Uh, that sucks. Uh, it can be upgraded, and I think we ought to upgrade it if we're going to be driving this thing any long distance. I mean, the date of manufacturing is 69, model number 420E. You've nice. got to be kidding me. It, it's a <laughs> meme. It wrote itself. <laughs> I hope that's a 9. It might be an 8. It could be a 9. We're going to say it's a 9. We're going to look till it is a 9. Yeah, but we got brakes. Yeah, there's brake fluid coming out. Of the, it'll, it'll be fine for today. It'll be fine for today. Aren't we like driving it to dinner? Oh. Okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll I guess have a, we'll have a chase vehicle. Yeah. Carb is going back on. Yeah. So Charles added brake fluid. How does the brakes feel? Any better? Well, the, there's the, brakes. Yeah, the pedal got a little bit, a little bit stiffer, okay. so it's not bad. I got the carburetor back on. We're ready to test fire this thing. Charles, keep an eye on that fuel pump, buddy. Oh, yep. You ready? Frank? Yep. Good. I guess we can hit the gas. Yeah. Oh, I probably could have done that. I'm sorry. Gas. Yeah. off. So this is the gearbox right here, and that's that's the uh, lever that Ike was moving in and out. So that gives us forward and reverse. So, wow, and that's the chain tensioner right there. There's a chain that, tensioner? That's crazy, yeah. Hearing Charles say, that's crazy, it must be crazy. It must well, be crazy. I mean, look at it, it looks like a tie rod for a truck. Oh yeah. Like that's the chain tensioner, it pivots the gearbox forward. Well, the chain looks good and lubed. Yeah, is there uh have you noticed anything down there, John? I know there's a bunch of grease fittings up here. We can go get the grease gun to take care of that. Oh, yeah. Isaac? Yep. Charles? Yep. It's been nice knowing you. Oh, perfect. Is it charged up? Uh, Yeah, it's in the green. We probably don't need this, but... Oh, God, the pin just fell out. That was too easy.
Wait, hit the brakes again? We only got one tire. No, your fog lights come on when you hit the brakes. Is that your flux capacitor? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know that belt's cooking on this thing. Probably not a very good off-road vehicle. You can feel the body twisting oh, and all really? that stuff. Oh, yeah. Everything look all right, Charles? Yeah. Yeah, it's got that typical smell of an old hot flathead. Ooh, it's stinky, right? That might be due to oh, the, the exhaust is in there. Yeah, the exhaust. Oh, I mean, you know what? We probably should uh, fix that exhaust leak because the exhaust is actually putting heat under there yeah which is not good for the engine because the engine is grabbing the air from under there to cool the engine yeah so yeah we'll fix the exhaust it's just a couple welds away yeah this thing's pretty cool it looks sweet yeah maybe, yeah. maybe and maybe we could put a new belt on it as many of as many of these belts as we have i want i wonder if we have one the right size oh god all right so we're gonna take this thing back to the shop we got a lot of work to do to make sure it's ready for dinner because uh, dinner is coming up soon. So, uh, Charles, let's get this thing to the shop and uh, give her a good check over. With the brakes. Yeah, that's so funny. I'm sure he is. Oh, we almost got that finger.
was one heck of a burnout for a king midget. Whew. I wonder if it's the first ever burnout from a king midget. I wonder yeah. if I could have done it without your help. Uh, I mean, you did that without my help. So, yeah. I don't know. This, this, if you get in the other shop, I bet you you can do donuts with this thing. So the first, uh, I wouldn't call it road test. Our off-road test went very well. I think the car is doing fine. It's off-road capability. I, I, I don't think I'd be doing a lot of off-roading with this thing. Um, there's a lot of things we got to do to it before we can take it out for dinner. Uh, brakes are an issue, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, Headlight. lights. Headlights, thank you. Headlights are not working, so we got to figure the brakes and the headlights out before we can even think about going out to dinner on this ride. The headlight switch is one of these uh, pull-out switches, <laughs> and uh, it didn't. It seemed like I had 12 volts on one side of the fuse with the with the switch out, even with the key off. So I think it's just wired up independent from the key. Uh, it's got 12 volts on one side, and it's not coming out on the other side of the fuse. So I'm going. I'm gonna pop the fuse out. Oh, hold on. Golly. Gotta be careful. I don't wanna I don't wanna make a connection with my screwdriver. Alright, so the fuse looks intact, but there's an incredible amount of corrosion on this. But maybe we get some sandpaper and just clean it up and put it back. So we decided to jack this thing up and see which brakes are not functioning. Charles, are we free over there? Yeah. All right, I'm on the brake. I can feel it. It's moving a little bit. Maybe it just needs to be adjusted. And, okay, that one's locked up. So, yep. So the brakes are working on this side. Okay, so we only got the front left brake working. Let's check the rear now. All right, that one works. All right. Let up. Yeah. All right, okay. try this one. Free. Yeah, hit the brake. Oh, okay. All right, so the front right one. Front that's right a, brake is not functioning. That's a passing grade. I think we can go to dinner on that. Well, we probably could. Uh, as long as the brake doesn't all of a sudden decide to engage and then not let go. Oh, yeah. Well, it's getting kind of late in the day. We're getting hungry, but there's not much left to do here. Charles is out grabbing a new headlight switch. Ike is gonna be welding up our crack in the exhaust and we'll be off to dinner. Yep. I'm thinking cracker barrel. Go over. That looks like it's it. Let's get going. Peep, peep. driving separate with a trailer, not because we didn't trust the King Midget, but kind of because we didn't trust the King Midget. Oh, look, he's getting thumbs up there. Wow, and it just dawned on us before, right before we left, that this thing may not have the same original top speed because a previous owner changed the transmission completely to a CVT. Yeah, they're doing about 35 right now. Oh, we did.
Oh, well, right there where that guy parked. Don't look at our car with disgust. You'll back, no, oh, okay. I was thinking about backing in, but you know. It's so tiny. <laughs> So we made it. I can't believe we made it. Dude, hey, you don't have to worry about door dinging anybody. <laughs> you can park two of these in the same spot. Yeah. I couldn't find you guys in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so top speed indicated, what What was it? We probably got 48, maybe. Okay, uh, highest yeah. I saw was 40. Okay. We have some work to do. Yeah, this yeah. thing, it was to the floor pretty much the whole time. How's everything looking? You did good. <laughs> it's hot. That head bolt was really hot. Yeah. Well, the fuel okay. leak slowed down some. <laughs> slowed down like the car. So after 22 years, we return this 1969 King Vision micro car to the road, and we're here at dinner at one of our favorite places, Cracker Barrel. So we have plans to drive this thing all the way to the beach on a road trip. But this video just proved that it needs a lot of work before you can do that. Before we can do that, so if that's something you want to see, be sure to leave this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment as well. What should we do to the King Midget? I think we need a higher top speed. We need four out of four brakes working, and we need some spare parts. So until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay. Anyone got a beer? You want to go move your car, buddy? You worried about it? He, he parked his stuff right by the window. Big speed. Ah, but we got another downhill. There we go. Big speed. This is going to be it, buddy. We're going to get over 50. Big speed. There we go. successful sir well we're not parked yet what are you doing So the King Midget had a successful first test drive returning to the road after 22 years. I thought I would share about what happened afterwards. I went to take my girlfriend for a ride and I noticed there were three types of fluid underneath the King Midget. We lost most of the fluid from one of these front shocks. Now we had a transmission fluid drip and it had puked all of the engine oil out onto the ground. I filled it back up, took it for a ride, and then it proceeded to dump all the engine oil out again. On top of that, we need uh, to repack the wheel bearings. We need new tires, it needs an alignment. We need to replace at least one of the shocks. Uh, we need a new belt, wheel cylinders, and a master cylinder uh, before taking this thing on any kind of mileage. So we've returned to the road, but the maintenance list is huge. That being said, this would be a killer ride to cruise a few hundred miles to the beach uh, with a Predator 670 V-Twin and all of those fixes that I just mentioned. So let us know down in the comments if that's what you want to see. Uh, we would be able to keep reverse neutral with the 670. It would be more power, but not an overwhelming amount where we'd mess with the chassis. But uh, I think that would be the right engine for this vehicle. Anyway, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode. And we'll see you next time. That's got to be empty. Dude, there's no weight in that. Oh, the trigger just fell. <laughs> oh, did you see it? Okay. Well, well, good thing. Good thing we didn't need it. Yeah. <laughs>